I was, uh, I was educated in a Catholic institution for practically 16 years of my life. Which brings me to drink. <laughs> I went to boarding school. <clears throat> and for a great deal of my life, because a priest had told me that when I sleep at night, I must sleep in the shape of the cross. You sleep like this with your arms across your chest in the shape of the cross. And I said, why? I was a little kid. And he said, because that's uh, when God travels through the night, <clears throat> he will look down and see you and see that you have the shape of the cross on you, and he will love you and protect you from all the evils of the night. Which is great. I slept like that for years. I moved into the senior school, and one of the kids said to me, he said, why do you sleep like that? And I said, because God, God moves around in the night, and he looks at me and he thinks, I love him. He said, you stupid bastard. This <laughs> will stop you from masturbating. <laughs> And it works. <laughs> Unless you've got extraordinary agile toes. <clears throat> it's extraordinary being brought up in a Catholic institution because they will never, they'll never really say things to you. When I was about 12, 13, we began to have lectures on what was called self-abuse. Priests would come in and he'd say, now today, boys, we're going to talk about self-abuse. What's self-abuse, Father? Uh, self-abuse is when you have an urge to uh, abuse yourself. <laughs> Satan, uh, Satan raises his ugly head and creates sin and the desire to sin and the desire to pleasure in your body and therefore you abuse yourself. You have this urge to do things to yourself. I'm all, we have no idea what he's talking about. What's he talking about? <laughs> he's not talking about wanking, is he? <laughs> all the mythology comes out about it. You do this, you lose two pints of blood. Every time you do that to yourself, you lose two pints of blood. You're draining yourself of your life's blood. You'll grow weak, white, and anemic, unable to walk. And I used to look at the old Pope being carried around. I thought, I know what you're doing. a totally different attitude to this self-abuse. I mean, you can actually become a sperm donor. You can do it and say you're a donor. I was just making a donation. I wasn't having a good time. <laughs> but not only that, but you can be paid for it. You can get 10 to 20 pounds for a, for a shot. <laughs> I know people who do it for nothing. Just job satisfaction. <laughs> it is a most extraordinary situation. When you are selected, they don't, they don't put you down as a name. You're put down as a color. You'll become Mr. Green or Mr. Brown. It's an identity to keep you anonymous. And you arrive there, and they give you a little plastic container. Not a big plastic container, <laughs> a little plastic container. And they show you into a cubicle. And in this cubicle, there's a table, a chair, no carpet, which is understandable. <laughs> a mirror, which worries me. Because I tend to think it's a two-way mirror and they've sold seats. soft pornographic magazines, a cup of tea and a digestive biscuit. <laughs> Only the English would do that. You're going to have a wank and they give you a cup of tea and a digestive biscuit. <laughs> and you sit there thumbing through these magazines, <laughs> waiting for the inspiration to make this donation. And you do. And the worst thing in the world is catching sight of yourself in the mirror just before your climax. Because you can't remember where you put the plastic container. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if you ever have to do it, rule one, take your tie off. <laughs> it always gets in the way.
And then you, you finish what you've done, you make your donation, and you walk down the corridor with your little container. And there are people sitting around looking at you. And they're all thinking, here's a wanker. <laughs> you hand it over, they give you the money. Nobody says, hooray. Nobody says, congratulations. They certainly don't shake your hand. <laughs> And in all of this, in all of this, one of the things, when I was researching this, the figure that kept on coming out of all these fertility things was 400 million. There are 400 million sperm per ejaculation, the average male. We get back to the average. 400 million, approximately. They're talking about 400 million, and they use the word approximately. <laughs> 400 million, that means, and it only takes one little egg fertilize, or one little sperm to fertilize the egg. That's all it needs. Those other are wasted. <laughs> I think to myself, I could repopulate China in two sessions. <laughs> and I went, to, I went to see a gynecologist friend of mine, and I said, why, if it only takes one sperm, why do we have 400 million? And he said, because of the odds, to increase the odds of the sperm getting to the eggs. It's nature. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, because it's a tremendous, difficult journey. Do you know that the, the sperm has as much chance of getting to the egg as you would have from swimming from Ireland to America in glue? <laughs> Human race would stop now. He said, the sperm has got to fight all the way there. And I said, well, what happens to all the others? He said, what do you mean, what happens to them? They're killed. I said, they're killed? What do you mean, killed? Who kills them? And he said, the defenses of the female. I said, well, wait, 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 what's, what? He said, you've got to consider the sperm is an outside force. It's an invader. So as soon as that invader enters the female, it activates her defenses. And all those defenses come into operation to kill the sperm. What you've got to try and see in your mind is two gigantic armies at war. <laughs> now, when I make love, that's how I think. <laughs> I think I must be the worst general in the world. <laughs> I've lost billions and billions of troops. <laughs> I've only had a couple of victories. <laughs> I see it. That's the way I see it. I see myself making love. I see my scrotum <laughs> filling up with sperm. But I see it in my mind like Salisbury Plains. <laughs> and my army are just all laid out. Not a modern day army, not khaki and guns and all. Mine are kind of, I see them as a medieval army. Shields and breastplates, spears and bows and arrows, and banners. <laughs> Legions of them all laid out, old flags fluttering, lovely green. Stand up and rest out! I see a general sperm on a horse. Whole army standing, it's up to you. And all the me, me, me. Stand still in the ranks. There'll be no premature ejaculation from this army. think about that then. Is a premature ejaculation, is it really made up of real courageous little sperm soldiers <laughs> who can't wait to get in? Let's get in there, let's get in there. <laughs> this is one of those long sessions that go on and on and on. They're a little cowardly sperms. I don't want to go in there. Don't die. <laughs> Do you know, I actually get so involved in this kind of army war thing, I'm making love. Before I climb us, I've actually heard myself say, Judge! <laughs> I see them all in. Let's go. Go for it. And all of a sudden, mm, wee, wee, alarm 
comes all the defenders coming out from everywhere. Get to the egg. I'll carry you to me, to me. Oh, I don't get through. Give this to my wife. Here, give out. One little sperm gets. I love it. Love the idea of the sperm going. Mm, my egg. <laughs> Can you imagine your army if she's wearing spermicide? <laughs> Charge! Spermicide! Spermicide! Gas mask! Spermicide! <laughs> <laughs> Can you, can you imagine your army? If you're wearing a contraceptive? 400 million troops. <laughs> charging into a rubber wall. <laughs> what, what's this? <laughs> Where's the wall? Where's the, cut your way through. <laughs> Sex life is going to be a bit different from now on, isn't it? <laughs> Gonna make love tonight? <laughs> An army. Oh. I'm gonna have another swig, and I'm gonna let you go home to hump. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much for listening. You've been a lovely audience to work to. Take care. Good night. And may your God go with you. <laughs>